When it comes to finding inspiration for the next big Hollywood blockbuster, Disney's never really been lacking when it comes to sources. Still waiting for that 100 Lives of Blackjack Savage movie. For their crimes, they save 100 lives or face an eternity in hell. One of the strangest areas of the Walt Disney Company that keeps getting mined for ideas are their theme park rides? Now in a post-Pirates of the Caribbean world, it might not seem that weird. But before Captain Jack Sparrow was raking in all those Disney dollars, the company had a couple of not quite so flashy attempts that didn't end up being the slam dunks they were hoping for. And with Jungle Cruise just released on Disney Plus, gives us a great opportunity to explore a few of these buried movies based on Disney theme park rides. And then quickly forget about them again. First up is the 1997 direct-to-TV movie Tower of Terror, based around Disney's Hollywood studios, The Twilight Zone, Tower of Terror. From <laughs> Studios, Walt Disney World, Florida, The Twilight Zone, Tower of Terror. Ride is an incredibly detailed drop tower themed around a haunted 1930s hotel which exists somewhere beyond the fifth dimension, beyond the deepest, darkest corner of the Twilight Zone. This is obviously not the non-smoking elevator. I don't have a good feeling about this. Since opening in 1994, the ride has gone on to become a Disney theme park staple with other versions eventually opening at Disney California Adventure, Tokyo Disney Sea, and Walt Disney Studios Park in Paris. Now, when it comes to the actual film, Disney completely dropped any Twilight Zone reference, leaving just Tower of Terror. Tomorrow on Disney. Checking in. Check into a haunted hotel and meet some ghostly guests who've never quite checked out. This is the most incredible story in history. Catch Steve Gutenberg in Tower of Terror. It's already done. A spell is past. Tower of Terror only on Disney. Instead, the movie focuses on a legitimate newspaper journalist turned low-rent tabloid writer named Buzzy Phillips in his quest to prove that a tragic 1939 disappearance is the result of witchcraft. And, uh, and yeah, that's Steve Gutenberg from the Police Academy movies. Because when you think supernatural ghost stories, you really want... Let's see the thighs. Come on, come on, I haven't got all day the thighs. Joining Buzzy's team of underdogs is his niece, Anna. She looks familiar. The caretaker, who just so happens to be the grandson of the original owner, and an actress by the name of Claire Poulet, who definitely isn't suspicious and absolutely isn't a ghost. Uh, this is my first job. Well, well second, actually, but um, the first one didn't really work out. No way. The story here isn't anything particularly special and plays out just as you would suspect. They find ghosts, ghosts try to scare them away, they don't go away, they discover the ghosts actually need their help, they help, throw in a twist at the end, roll them credits and cash those checks. Out of all of the movies that we're looking at today, The Tower of Terror is definitely the one that shares the most with the attraction that it's based on, which... Makes sense, given that this is just one long promotion for the Hollywood Studios drop tower, and so much of the movie was actually filmed in and around the ride itself. Overall, The Tower of Terror is an okay little made-for-TV spook fest that doesn't ever really try to be anything more than that, which overall works in its favor. It definitely doesn't pack the same kind of nightmare fuel for kids as director DJ McHale's other 90s TV show did. <laughs> But for younger kids that are just looking for a milder creep factor, there's still good times to be had here. Unfortunately, this one isn't on Disney+, Plus, so you'll have to stick with the DVD. And apparently, a real honest-to-goodness Tower of Terror movie is in the works. Maybe not. 
Here's a really strange one. Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, The Ride, is a classic Disneyland dark ride that opened with the park in 1955 and then later at the Magic Kingdom in 1971. Now here he comes with his microphone, Art Linkletter. Mr. Disney's great picture, Wind in the Willows, inspires this ride, Mr. Toad, on a 1903 automobile. And believe me, this ride is the wildest of them all. The automobile goes through on a monorail, pursued through London town by police, crashing through walls, and finally goes in to a tunnel. And as you go into the railroad tunnel, you apparently see a train coming in the opposite direction. You can't turn, you can't escape. There's a tremendous collision head-on to the locomotive, and then... I can't tell you the finish because I don't want to spoil it for you. This is a ride that not only parents should go with children, but the parents' parents should go with the parents. Now, when it comes to making a movie around all of this, it would seem like the easiest thing to do would be to go back to the original source material and make a Wind in the Willows movie. And that's what happened, kind of. This holiday, you are invited to a very special place where you'll see some very unusual faces. Hooray! Like Mr. Toad, yeah. Mole, Ratty, and Badger. And where the only thing that disturbs the peace Tea time! is the sound of the wind in the willows. Beautiful day. Are you a fan of the Wind in the Willows, Disney, or any other version? Do you like Monty Python's style of deadpan humor? If so, you're probably going to be all about this movie. Now, there is a new wraparound story that involves the weasels building a dog food factory over Toad Hall, and even a few musical numbers sprinkled throughout. But overall, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride is still the same classic adventures of Toad, Ratty, Mole, and Badger as they row along the riverside, get lost in the woods, break out of prison, and grapple with Toad's obsession with both caravans and cars. The musical numbers are hit and miss. It's a secret of survival in a very nasty world. Is it really such a nasty world? Oh yes. Mostly miss. But the overall manic humor from the Python crew more than makes up for things and does help the title feel just slightly less like a marketing scheme, even though that's clearly what it is. Counsel for the prosecution, do you wish to add to what counsel for the defense has said? No, my lord, I would just like to wag my finger at the accused a few times. Uh, certainly, certainly. When Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, the movie, was first shown in U.S. theaters in 1997, it was actually titled The Wind in the Willows. It wasn't even a Disney movie at this point. It was just a very strange British film that had been made by many of the members of Monty Python. But because it had bombed during its initial release in the U.K., its U.S. distributors wanted nothing to do with it and pretty much just buried the film. And it stayed that way until Walt Disney Home Video picked up the rights in 1998 and changed the title to something a little more familiar. Also, much like the Tower of Terror movie, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride isn't currently on Disney+, Plus, so your only option here is to track down the original DVD. Come on, Disney, you know what to do. Here we have another classic Disney attraction that somehow became a movie. Mission to Mars opened in both Disneyland and Walt Disney World in 1975 as a way for guests to experience and appreciate what space travel to Mars might actually be like in the future. After a lengthy Mission Control pre-show, guests would enter a circular theater with screens on the ceilings and the floors and seats that vibrated to give the illusion of traveling through space. By the 1990s, Mission to Mars wasn't exactly the exciting vision into the future that it once was, so Disney decided that it was time to put the old girl down. Disney World ended up reusing the circular theater for the infamous extraterrestrial alien encounter, which ended up being well known for all the wrong reasons, while Disneyland went a different direction. Pizza! Now I hear ya. How does this, this, and this get turned into a big Hollywood film? It doesn't. Instead of any of that, the Mission to Mars movie made in the year 2000 goes for a much different approach. Our finest scientists set foot on the planet Mars. We think there's a good chance that this could be water. And then they vanished. Now, a mission has been launched 
A mission that will lead to a discovery. That DNA looks human. And change life on Earth as we know it. I am not losing you. Mission to Mars. You can start with Brian De Palma, who was chosen to direct. An interesting choice when you think about the kind of movies he's best known for. How about the actual movie, though? Is it any good? Does it at least reference the ride? And what is Jerry O'Connell doing playing an astronaut? Now, I will give it some credit in that it at least delivers on the title Mission to Mars in that there is a mission to Mars. The main problem here is that this has got to be the most boring mission ever. Most of the conversations that happen in this movie don't even make all that much sense. It's as if the writers were trying to make the audience feel like they were just casual observers during a NASA operation. What about SEMA? The Saturn imaging probe. It's got a slingshot around Mars on its way through the solar system. It could be retasked to take pictures, read radiation levels at Mars One Base Camp. You're forgetting the bigger problem. The orbits are all wrong. But we can go earlier and get there faster. If we reconfigure the payload for extra fuel, we model that, Ray. I've modeled it. On paper, yes. And all of that is especially frustrating when this is one of the first glimpses we get of Mars. Yes, this is what I want to see more of. Instead, we get the story of three friends. Tim Robbins, Don Cheadle, and Gary Sinise doing his best impression of a humanoid. Don Cheadle and his bangin' goatee end up stranded on Mars after making a strange alien discovery, so his buddies mount a rescue mission. One of the least entertaining rescue missions possible. And even when a little danger is introduced to the mix... It still somehow manages to drag on forever. Micrometeoroids. Kill those alarms. Critical systems alert. Critical systems alert. Except this part. Okay, that's pretty awesome. The rest of the crew manages to make it down to Mars, find Don Cheadle's goatee, which isn't even really a goatee anymore, but by the time we hit Mission to Mars' third act and discover the mystery of the face structure, you probably won't even care anymore. Spoiler, it's not aliens. I'm kidding, it's definitely aliens. I would 100% recommend skipping this one, unless you're one of the few Sinesiacs out there. In that case, pop open your favorite bottle of bottom shelf scotch and enjoy. And last but, nope, this is, this is definitely the least. Country Bear Jamboree was an opening day attraction for Magic Kingdom when the park debuted in 1971. While Disney initially imagined the all-animatronic stage show to be located within the proposed but never built Mineral King Ski Resort. After Disney's death in 1966, plans for the show shifted to the still-in-development Walt Disney World. When it eventually opened, it was so well-received that plans were immediately drafted for versions to be built at both Disneyland and the still-under-construction Tokyo Disneyland. 
Even though it's become one of the more antiquated attractions within the parks, Country Bear Jamboree has managed to build up quite a loyal fan base over the years. But that still wasn't enough to convince Disneyland not to replace their version with a Winnie the Pooh ride in 2001. What's strange about the timing of this replacement is that Disney had a little film called The Country Bears already on the way. So here we are again. How does a beloved Disney attraction with no narrative to it get turned into a 90-minute movie? From Disney, Barry and his family are off on the ultimate family vacation, and you can come along for all the Disney fun. Apparently the makers of the Country Bears have no idea either. Yeah. So wash the car. <laughs> Your hair looks ridiculous. My hair. Take a cruise. Ah! Hello. Huh? And share some memories. This is my baby picture. This is yours. <laughs> On the ultimate Disney adventure. Yeah! Disney's The Country Bears. Waiting G starts July 26th. So where Tower of Terror went the literal route with its storytelling, and Mission to Mars only took inspiration from the ride it was based on, this movie kind of does both... Oh, man! <gasps> Basically, we're presented with a movie where the country bears are all real-ish anthropomorphic bears that used to be in a very popular band that broke up in the early 90s. The overall look of each of these characters is easily the best part of this movie and gives off just a ton of personality, while still managing to be creepy as hell. <laughs> Apparently, these costumes were all designed by the Jim Henson Creature Shop, so kind of a low point for them, I guess? Maybe not. Anyway, you'd think that a movie called The Country Bears, based on an attraction called Country Bear Jamboree, would mostly focus on the country bears. Not only would you be wrong, but you'll also need to buckle up because this is where things get a little wild. For some reason, the main character of this movie is another random anthropomorphic bear by the name of Barry Barrington. Barry was adopted and raised by a human family who has never told him that he's a bear. And for some reason, nobody in this world, except for his older brother, recognizes that he's a bear living in a human family. Oh, he looks like a fourth grader? <laughs> That's yeah. right. This is that kind of movie. Barry runs off to Country Bear Hall, where he learns that the concert hall will be torn down by the big bad of the movie if they don't raise $20,000. How are they supposed to raise $20,000? Why? By hitting the road to bring the band back together for one last benefit concert. We need 5,000 bucks fast. We're on a mission from God. Who is the big bad? Oh no! Country Bear Hall has been crushed! Yeah. This is that kind of movie. <laughs> Everything else that happens along the way is just one insane exercise in what were they thinking here? Random musical numbers with early 2000s pop singers? Awkwardly forced romance between two of the country bears? Oh, stop your blubbering. Hello, darkness, my old friend. The Country Bears is the epitome of why does this movie even exist? Who is it even intended for? I'm still trying to figure that out, but chances are it's not you. So stay far, far away from that section of Disney+. Plus. Well, there you have it. Disney movies before Pirates of the Caribbean that were all inspired by theme park rides. The only question left is which camp Jungle Cruise is going to fall into. They're just hanging out like that. Well, it's how it's made. It's got a very strange shape. It's, if you've seen it out the back, it's like, like that. Well, it's not, it's kind of actually just straight. Oh. Would you like me to give it a wiggle? Yes. Absolutely not. Yes. I could pop around the back and give it a once over. No, we're good.